talking about, their process, their artwork, how they came to this body of work. Um, the thesis is a culmination of a year, sometimes two years worth of research and exploration of one central thesis idea. So our juniors right now are starting to work through those ideas and then they'll continue to work on that until this time next year when they start having their exhibitions. Um, so it's a lot of work that goes into this, um, a lot of work from everybody, all of their peers, their faculty. Um, so. First, we will have Ron Gong speaking about his work. Um, Ron is from Beijing, China, and he has been with us for four years. So oh, he's after he speaks, we'll have Ashley and then Grayson, just so that you have a, a sense of how we'll move through the gallery. So, all right. So, thanks for the introduction by Mindy. Uh, and welcome everyone, my name is Rong, I'm from uh, Beijing, China, and uh, first off I just want to thank everyone for being here, it's truly an honor for me to be able to speak in front of everyone today. Um, and my dad is here in the audience taking photos, uh, I want to say, uh, I wanna say uh, thanks everyone, like including my faculty members, my peers for supporting me throughout these four years, and also I especially want to thank Patty because this amazing exhibition won't happen um, without your help. So. Uh, I have been here for four years, and throughout those four years, both my um, technique as well as my concept in art making has been through a set of development, a set of changes. Uh, as I recall even earlier on, when I was a kid, I was very visual. I enjoy looking around. I just I was so intrigued by different patterns, by you know, just line work, colors, and compositions. And I would always want to just doodle on pieces of papers. And my parents would always just keep all of them and uh, hang them on a wall in my old house. And that's when I realized I'm really interested in art making. Um, observation and how to transform that on a surface. And then when I was a freshman, I came to America to keep pursuing my passion. And when I was uh, in ninth grade, I was really dedicated in how to improve my observational skills, how to make my drawings and paintings more accurate. Um, and I quite enjoyed doing so. But after so long of doing this action, I hit plenty of plateaus. Um, and then I started to ask myself questions that everyone, every single artist would ask himself, which, which is, uh, what is this? You know, what am I making? How is my work benefiting uh, myself to other people? What is the relationship between my world and the surrounding and to the rest of the world? And that was the end of my sophomore year, the beginning of my junior year. I really started to comp contemplate on that. I started to make my work more and more personal. I started to do a lot more self-reviewing, self-reflection. Um, at the meantime, improving my foundation in painting, which is my preferred medium. So as displayed in this, um, in this show, the painting is uh, presented in a chronological fashion. We have uh, smaller, more gestural, more quicker paintings to uh, my senior year collection, which is uh, a lot more conceptual driven, a lot more symbolic. And through my work, um, this year after I come back, I, I realize a commonality that ties all my work together to become cohesive, which is my exploration uh, of my own sense of aesthetics, uh, the seek for comfort, um, the reflection of my own identity, and the understanding of human in general. And when I say aesthetics, I think it's very fundamental, it's crucial to my own artistic goal, because recall yourself, um, last time you enter an art museum or a gallery, we're always so stunned by just the formal quality of a piece of work. You don't know what's up to matter, it is yet, but you are very intrigued by just the visual aspect of a piece of work because we're such visual animals. We live in such a visual society. Um, we do realize that, but it seems like most of us keep it on the low most of the time. So through my work, I want to bring it on the top of the surface level. I want to say we're all very visual and uh, we can enjoy beauty. We can uh, explore our own style and aesthetics. Though I say, um, aesthetics is my primary goal in my paintings. 
uh, I still consider myself a narrator uh, in all my work. I want to tell my story, I want my voice to be heard, and that leads to a further understanding of myself, um, slash my self-identity. And imagine ourselves, you know, just on the street, if someone compliment you on your outfit, we'll feel really happy, we'll feel joyful. On the other hand, if someone criticize your haircut, we'll feel frustrated. And our identity is so heavily shaped by our surroundings. Um, and that leads to a lack of enjoyment of process, of simply being. So I want to, I want to tell this um, to all the, to, to, to the viewers and also to myself, it's a constant reminder to enjoy the process. And because we're human, we're so often blinded by this kind of external things, both positive and negative com uh, comments. So I want to say, why not, you know, stop being blinded and simply just enjoy all the process, you know, of being. And it's quite a beautiful life if, if we can just drop, you know, ego, desire, and too much uh, emotion, and life is quite beautiful. Um, and in the end, I want to quote a uh, uh, famous uh, psychologist, Dr. Robert Puff. Uh, simply flow with life. Life is beautiful and accept what is, love what is. Thank you. Or, or a metaphor for all uh, human emotions, subjectivities. And like I said, we're often blinded by this. You know, we can't take it off. Um, so yeah, it represents desire, it represents ego, and many times we think uh, we are, you know, as, as this one definite thing, but no, it's, have, it's shaped by the surroundings. We don't really understand, so we're in a way blinded. There are a lot of if there are all of them is like bigger in your painting and you don't pay a lot of attention on their eyes because they are closed or covered by the right side. Um, is there any meaning for you? So um, I enjoy drawing and painting figures uh, like throughout my life because I, I think it's the most intricate, complex subject matter to depict. And I, I find myself, I find a strong sense of uh, satisfaction by doing so. And I, the, the blindfold, um, you know, like presented uh, blinded people with vision because we're in a way often can see through uh, the objective, we're subjective. So I guess it's a representation. <coughs> from um, other kinds of emotions. You know, there are 
it's not only negative one. It's also uh, positive ones like happiness, you know, uh, joy. So I think um, honestly, I'm not that uh, proficient in doing so. It's a lifelong kind of journey. But I'm just trying to use my work and use my uh, aesthetic to to represent that. It's kind of a long long time trajectory for myself too. I hope that answered the question. Yeah, it's definitely the the thing that's hard to kind of separate beauty from objectivity. Yeah, that's not for sure. I agree. So the for a lot of for a large portion of the show it's like it makes sense because you're using realism to like appreciate, you know, real life. But there are times in which you move into sort of a more psychological and impressionistic approach to your painting. And even the surface treatment. I'm wondering what makes in person this what moves you to make that decision. I love that question. So um, throughout my entire learning learning process, I guess, there's a there's always different ways of painting. And and um, I set myself different goals in different phases, honestly. So when I was little, for example, I just wanted to achieve the old master look, which is super random. I thought that was that was something that I wanted to achieve. And then I move on to the next one, which is, you know, some other goal I have. So I, I like this senior year, I realized I want to explore more in terms of ways of applying paint and also stylistic choice. So I start to, you know, not only have more rendered pieces, but also more, you know, one-time gestural, uh, more crude, if you would say. Uh, pieces. It's all about experiment and just enjoy the process of moving the paint around on the surface. Um, can you explain what draws you to partners all of your paintings? Like, is it? It's kind of, it's kind of like a weird obsession thing. <laughs> <laughs> and like my old painting, I never varnished any of them. But you know, as I was learning, I was I, I got to. Um, I was introduced to more mediums, to more you know different ways of how to treating the surface. And I remember my junior year, I was introduced to the Mar varnish, and just the finish of that you know beautiful, smooth, shiny surface really interests me. And I became more and more obsessed. Like each painting I've done, the, the thickness of the the varnish just builds up. And like <laughs> I don't know what what after I've done a painting, I just I I just want to varnish it. And it's, <laughs> it's a weird obsession. I guess my only obsession. John. Could you talk a little bit about the relationship between the figure and the background and how that's kind of all the work? Yeah. Um, so, like I said, um, uh, throughout different learning process, I focus on uh, multiple different tasks. Um, so, some of the paintings presented here, they are focused more on the human figure, on the portrait and less so on the background. Um, but then I realized in order to make my painting, I guess in a way more vivid and more and fuller, I want to incorporate space and you know background. So I start to put figures in real life setting because there's so much color, uh, different color palette in real life and there's so much more element that we can explore in real life. And I start to uh, incorporate the figure into different background. So rather than flat background, it's, it becomes more of a three-dimensional space. And with this challenge, uh, problem come along. So it requires more problem solving. So I guess uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's, a, it's a growth in, in painting journey. And it requires multiple reflection of, you know, what, what needs to change in this painting? How can I change it? And what's, what should I just leave, leave it be? You know, so I think it becomes more and more fun. Yeah.